Hi, Family Mass. I'm Tina, and today I'm going to walk you through Matthew 27, 11 through 31. This is a section of scripture that always really chokes me up, so I'm going to try to do it without getting choked up. Um, so it starts out where Jesus is brought before Pilate. He's, he's already been brought before the Jewish leaders. Now he's brought before Pilate, who is the Roman leader. And he, Pilate asked him, are you king of the Jews? And Pilate was more concerned um, with the political repercussions of Jesus claiming to be the king of the Jews than the religious ones. Um, and Jesus says, you have said so. Um, and so then Pilate tries to get Jesus to defend himself and Jesus refuses to defend himself. He asks him, don't you know what they've accused you of? And he refuses to answer and this really surprises Pilate because he's used to people being self-serving and um, begging him not to look, to take their life and you know, having an argument why they're innocent. And Jesus didn't do any of those things. Of course, Pilate could know that Jesus was fulfilling his father's plan to be crucified and he wasn't going to um, try to get out of it. So... It was the uh, governor's custom during the, this time, the Passover, to release uh, one of the prisoners to the Jews. And um, so he asked him, he asked them, would you rather have me um, release Jesus Barabbas or do you want me to release Jesus of Nazareth? I find it really interesting that they both had the same first name and um, Bar in Hebrew means against, and Abbas is the word for God. So Bar Abbas, um, it's one of the words for God. So I, uh, it's, I find that really interesting. So they, so then he gets a message from his wife. Um, have you ever done that? <laughs> one time my husband was preaching and um, he, did, he said something and, and I just wanted him to know later and I don't want to forget. So I decided to text it to him and I didn't realize he had his phone in his pocket and it was on and, and it got a notification from me when I was sitting in the front row there. So, you know, us wives, we can send some messages at some pretty inopportune times. So he gets this message from his wife. She had a dream and she's saying, I have nothing to do with this innocent man. So, um, I don't know if he considered it or if he just read it and set it aside because, you know, he was working. Don't send any messages when I'm working with a woman, right? Um, and then he asked the crowd again, which they wanted, Barabbas or Jesus, and they said, we want Barabbas. And um, Barabbas would have been kind of a folk hero to the Jews um, because he was a rebel and he had rebelled against Rome. So um we see him as a murderer and a, like an evil man, but they probably didn't see him that way, especially the crowd that was there on that day, um, which was different than the crowd that uh, welcomed Jesus into Jerusalem a week earlier. Those were probably pilgrims, Galileans, uh, people that were coming into Jerusalem for the Passover. These people were probably local to Jerusalem and um, just a different crowd. So when they asked for Barabbas, Pilate washes, it has a little thing of water and he washes his hands and he says, I am innocent of this man's blood. You know, I'm not guilty of this innocent man's blood or however he said it. And um, the crowd says, that's okay. We will be guilty of this man's blood, us and our children. And so it's really interesting that um, in 70 AD, which was only a couple of decades later, a few decades later, the Jerusalem was destroyed and the temple with it um, in their own self-fulfilling prophecy there. Um, so he hands Jesus over to be flogged. He hands him over to the Roman guards. and The Roman guards take him to the praetorium and they strip him of his own clothes and they put a... Um, scarlet robe, red colored robe on him, which is the color of royalty. And he, they put, twist a crown of thorns and stick it on his head. And they put a staff in his right hand, that staff, the symbol of power, especially in the right hand. 
Um, and then they mocked him and said, Hail, King of the Jews. Little did they know that he really was the King of the Jews. This is not a king in the way that they understood a king to be. Um, and then they spit on him and they struck him in the head over and over again with the staff. And after that, they sent him away to be crucified. And this whole, um, and this whole section of scripture just really touches me because Jesus knew where he was headed and he did it willingly. And here is the proof. He didn't even defend himself um, so that he could die for us. And that just really is an amazing thing to know. And so thank you for joining me in today's section of scripture.